Hey guys and welcome to the second episode of this combat series. Today we're going to create a hit detection when our bullets and projectiles hit the target. We're going to give our target some HP, hit points and we're going to make sure that those hit points can go down based on damage so that we can actually kill George the Skeleton. Get ready and let's get coding. Do you want to learn how to design and make games or maybe you want to learn how to work with Godot? then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss a thing. Also, if you've got any questions, you can ask them down in the comments below or you can find me on Twitch. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday where I stream my own game development. So I hope to see you there one day. Let's get started. In the last episode, we created a scene in which we can shoot some of these ice spears or maybe in its bullets or rockets in your game. We can hit George and the bullet is removed from the scene when we, when we hit something. However, of course, we don't just want the bullet to disappear from the scene. We want to be able to hit George and make sure that George takes damage. To do that, we first have to differentiate between hitting a wall or a set of barrels or a table and actually hitting an enemy like for example, George. In order to do that, we're gonna put George, the scene itself, so we're gonna to go to the scene of George, and we're gonna put George in a node group, and we're gonna call that node group enemies. So by putting George in this node group, every time we load George onto the map scene, um, for example, when we create some brothers and sisters, maybe some cousins and nephews, uncles and aunts for him, um, they will all be in that node group enemies. Now with that done, we can go to our um, spell scene and on the spell scene where currently we detect an on spell body entered function, we currently are only hiding it because we want it to remove from the game and it will self-destruct after the seconds and self-destruct as we have um, created in the last episode. We're going to add um, two lines of code that is if the body so the body is returned from the signal that is the reference to the node it it hit so that would be the reference to uh, the node of, of George if that um, that hit object is in the group enemies which we just put George in it's gonna say print hit and that should be able to allow us to detect whether we're hitting George or one of his nephews, sisters and brothers, or when we hit a wall. So when I drag this over here, you can see the editor here. And as you can see, when I hit the wall, nothing happens. But when I hit George, it is printing um, the hit right there. Now, as you can see, it's not, sometimes I get like two or three hits at the same time. And that's because maybe the bullet like shifts a little bit it creates another detection possibly when the bullet is removed like we're, we're hiding it we're not removing it yet because that runs us into errors so we want to make sure that the bullet is becomes um, not functional as a collision shape the moment the first hit detection um, was triggered so on the collision shape of our uh, rigid body 2D within the inspector, we have a option disabled. And we're gonna reference that disabled option in our code. To do that, we're gonna add one more line of code on the top of here that as soon as the first signal is hit, the first uh, body is entered, we're gonna get the collision polygon 2D. So that is the collision shape um, of the um, ice spear in this case, or your bullet maybe in your scenario. And we're gonna set the disabled to true, but we're not gonna call the function set disabled, set underscore disabled um, with the value of true. We're gonna set deferred. Now what set deferred does is that even when the collision shape is currently in a physics process, it will wait until that, that physics process is done and then it will turn it off. If you don't set deferred but set it immediately, you'll likely run into errors because the collision shape is being in use and you can't change the value of the disabled uh, parameter in the inspector the moment that the collision shape is still in use. So this is a safe way to disable it and a functional way to disable it. And when we have done this, you can see right there in the editor, we get one hit for every time an ice spear hits. So that's exactly what we want. Now we can move on. Now, before we're actually going to uh, well, kill George, we first got to make sure that George actually has some, some hit points. So on George's um, scene, in his script, we currently only set the animation to uh, play the animation of Idle Southwest. So George is just walking, uh, not really walking, he's just looking around, facing Southwest. And we're going to give uh, George two variables. We're going to give him a max HP, and we're going to give him a current HP. 
The reason why we give him two hit point statistics is because we want to have one for the maximum value, which we want be, to be the value um, when the game starts. But we also want a current HP to track when he's actually going to die. We want to remember the maximum HP because for whatever reason, maybe uh, George has a... Um, um, a, a, a healing aunt who, who started herbalism. Maybe she's gonna come up and heal George, but we don't want to be able to heal George past 400 hit points if he gets healed. So we always want to make sure we keep that max HP value within the script. So if we have healing mechanics, we cannot overheal something to beyond its maximum value. So that's why we use two hit point values. Now, as soon as the game is ready loading, we're gonna set that the current HP is equal to the max HP. Now George has some health and we can start taking his health down. To actually take the HP down we have to look at where do we want to set those functions. We already have the spell function which is currently registering when it hits something but we actually don't want the on spell body entered function to deduct the damage from um, the spell on George's hit points. The reason why is that you will very quickly end up with a lot of code intermingling with each other. So a good practice is that um, the scenes take care of the, as much as possible, of the variables within themselves. So instead of um, creating the damage uh, script for George or any other enemy under the on spell body entered function, we're gonna create a function on George um, his script and which this is going to be a on hit function. I'm just gonna make it a pass right now so it doesn't run into errors, uh, but this the function we're gonna be filling to actually handle the damage itself. Now, in order to call this function, we're gonna go to the spell function because the spell function, or I should say that the spell on body entered function is going to activate that. So in order, we're gonna replace print hit here with if that body is in the group enemies, then that body's on hit function should run with the value, the damage that it should enter. And to make sure that we can actually do some damage, this spell needs to have some damage. So we're gonna set damage to, for example, 90 HP. So what's gonna happen now, it's the spell is going to detect that it's hit something, it's gonna then shut itself down, it's gonna verify whether that thing that it hit is within the group enemies, and if so, it's gonna um, start the on hit function within the thing that it hit and it will pass the damage value in our case 90 into that function and that's what we have on George that's why we have defined damage over here so this function no is going to receive a value in this case an integer so with that done what we can do is we can for testing purposes say okay print I got hit and we can run the game and we can verify that the function is triggered properly. Now again, I'll shift this up a little bit. You have the editor right there and you can see that when we hit George, George is saying I got hit and not the spell saying I hit something that we did earlier. So now we can start actually putting in the damage calculations. Now, to make George's hit points go actually down, I'm gonna remove the pass and print command. We no longer need these. And we're gonna say that the current HP is minus the damage that was received in this command by our spell. When we call the function, we passed in the damage. So we're gonna uh, deduct that damage from the current HP. Now, of course, we also have to verify if George is still alive after each hit. We gotta verify if he still has any HP left. So if, the current HP is equal or lower to zero, then George has died. We're gonna play or run a new function on death. Now, that doesn't exist yet, so let's define that as well. So we have a new function on death. And of course, when George died, we wanna see that he's actually dying. He's, he, he, he died, so, oh, that's not the right one. Let's get this one. Um, so we're gonna get the animation player, and instead of playing idle south, we're gonna play deaf south. These are animations that I've um, set up prior to this type tutorial, as we're focusing on the combat parts of uh, Godot right now, and not on the animations. I don't wanna put everything in between each other. 
So now we can go to George. We need five hits, we do 90 damage. George has 400 HP. So one, two, three, four, five. And George just died. Now there's a problem because I can hit him again. Because when I hit him again, he currently has minus 50 HP. He will have minus 140 HP. Again, the command, if current HP is, slow, is lower than zero, uh, will hit. And as you can see, he dies again, and again, and again, and again. So this is not what we want. So we gotta we gotta um, do something about that. And what we're gonna do about that is that as soon as the on death um, function runs, we're gonna get the collision shape of George, and we're gonna set the third disabled true. So just like we did in the spell that we turn off the collision shape of the spell as soon as it hits something, we're gonna turn off the collision shape of George as soon as it has died. Now this does not only fix the well, you could say the bug with George being able to double die or triple die or however many times he wants to die. He's a skeleton, but still, it also makes sure that when George dies, our bullets will pass George again to make sure that we can hit his brothers and sisters that are standing behind him. He doesn't really have any backup now, but there's sure to come some, some, some help for George. I, I may hope for George in the future. So that's it for today. We made sure that George was able to detect when he hit something or the spell was able to recognize when it hit George. We gave George hit points. We gave George the ability to recognize when he died. We made sure he was able to die. He was able to make sure that his dead body doesn't interfere with the game world anymore. And we still have his maximum HP. So we can add some healing mechanics in the future to heal George back up again. So that's it for today. I hope you guys liked it. And if you do, then please smash that like button and hit subscribe. Don't forget that bell icon to make sure you don't miss the next episode of our combat series. In the next episode, we're gonna add some HP bar to George. So we cannot only see when we actually killed him, we can also see how far we are to actually killing him. And that will of course be an important part in any RPG kind of game that we're making right now or any action game in which you can kill something. So that's gonna be up for the next time. If you got any questions, again, put them down in the comments below or visit me in my stream. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday and I really hope to see you there one day. Bye bye guys and good luck with your games.